All right. Okay, so I want to talk about today um, how the video game industry has grown over the years and what the key factors are. And how many of you, uh, when it comes to video games or even like the slightest thought, like how many of you believe that Pong is like the first game that was created by a show of hands? Well, Pong wasn't the first game created. Pong was actually the third game created. The first game created was by MIT, which was back then a computer um, manufacturer. MIT created the first arcade game, which was Space Force, which was developed and released in 1962. Um, Atari and MIT were the only big uh, game companies out there around that time. Um, MIT was, would always release games before Atari because Atari would only take their ideas and slightly modify them and just release similar games towards them. How they released Space Wars, um, Atari released Computer Space, which is just a rename, of the, uh, they just renamed the game, slightly different, but so, it's sort of similar. And um, they just like took the same um, um, items from the game, like spaceship and every enemy, and uh, kept them together. But um, after that, um, MIT released their first game console, which was the Odyssey. The Odyssey came with a tennis-like game, uh, which one of the CEO from Atari, uh, Nolan Bush Hell, I think was his name, um, was at um, MIT's release of their game console, saw the game, called one of his um, tech guys and uh, told him about the tennis-like version game of MIT, got him to get a team together and re replicate the game, but with their own little touch, which is how Pong was created. Pong was just basically the game that set off the launch of the industry. If it wasn't for Atari's launch of Pong, the gaming industry wouldn't even have been started. Through this, um, many companies got saw this happen and got a lot of them interested. And in the video game industry, competition is what really strives it to keep on pushing and releasing more games. Like many of us, um, some of you might recognize some of these companies like Nintendo, Valve, Capcom, Square Enix, Rareware, Atari, Sony, Sega, or Rockstar, who are now today's like most known companies around there, and we would also recognize them by their mascots, like Mega Man, Sonic, Crash Bandicoot, the uh, Mario Brothers, Ryu from Street Fighter, and Z Link from Zelda. Um, through um, Pong's um, innovations of how they just basically replicated games, um, many companies would do the exact same, and that's how basically competition through this entire company um, industry basically helps other uh, companies just take relative ideas, put a little twist between them, and uh, release their own versions. And uh, besides that, it's like kind of like copying each other's like encouraged, because if someone uh, like it's how it keeps them growing and lets them survive. Unlike the movie industries and the music industry, in which um, Music, every song is sort of uh, original, and so are movies, how everything should be. Like, no one wants to see the same kind of movie, or like a similar thing. So, uh, with video games, it's just, um, we just like to see games that are with a similar idea, but see what companies can do with, their, with the technology that's given to them. And through technological advancements, we see differences like, <coughs> how we went from 1991 from the Super Nintendo to 2001 with the GameCube to 2006 with the Wii and to 2012 with the Wii U. Um, though these are um, a big jump between them, how I think the technological differences are the fact that uh, uh, with the Super Nintendo, we had pixelated games as to when we got to the GameCube, it was the first time we saw 3D games with a little bit of polygons, which is basically just a bunch of like um, shapes uh, put together, rearranged in a way that we 
and create a 3D figure. Um, then we came out with the uh, Wii, which was basically uh, just more technologically advanced in the fact that there was more polygons, which made games a lot more smoother in the 3D version. With the Wii U, it just, we took it to where we add ourselves, we kind of integrate ourselves into the uh, game, the console itself, and basically, um, the Wii U, and for like an instance, an example is um, when um, Nintendo released their Super Mario 3D World game, um, there's some levels where you need to blow on the console in order to uh, get some platforms lifted up, which is like how they get their stuff integrated, like they get you involved. Um, but not only that, like um, the Wii, Nintendo themselves, are like big company rivals in like in which they like, with lower consoles like they mostly rival mobile games than as to like with big companies like um, Microsoft and Sony who are like the big dogs when it comes to the video game industry mostly because they do have similar um, consoles but the fact that the there's differences in the fact that Microsoft has more retail games which is like from big companies that we all know as to having indie games which are basically uh, people who are at their homes just developing games by themselves but are authorized to sell them on their um, um, services as where the PlayStation has more indie games as to uh, actual retail games due to the fact that uh, the PlayStation doesn't really, when it comes to online services they do give out free games with some other subscription bases, but um, they don't. Their internet's kind of slow when it comes to it, and unlike the Xbox, where you do pay a subscription-based service, you do um, get um, uh, the quality service that you need. Like you don't get uh, uh, the service shut down just like the PlayStation did for six months when they got hacked. Um, they they do uh, provide through like even though like they do like suffer they're similar and they do have like their own games like the industry still grows due to the fact that there's competition between them and the fact that they can survive slowly on like copying each other and uh, reproducing games similar to them and uh, not only that but like. Um, in a way that they survive through piracy more than uh, anything through like the service, though uh, some some uh, media is like copied. Like single player games are copied more than multiplayer games because obviously multiplayer games there's no point to pirating them because you can't get the service since most companies keep track of their serial numbers on their games and they're registered onto your console so it usually doesn't affect the game company as much. So unlike where music and the movie industry fell to survive through piracy, um, the video game industry actually just survives and doesn't really get affected by it. But in conclusion, like, the key factors that really help is like the fact that uh, competition helps them. The fact that they can take an idea that was, that's already out there and recreate it and put their own twist, uh, keeps out uh, games, re keeps games coming out and for, uh, produ for consumers. And the fact that their technology, even though they're similar, they still have to rival against each other and adding more stuff that they need to have in there for the consumers to keep their attention. Roger, what did you think? I thought it was a good topic. Uh, I liked the, uh, when you talked about the game industries and how, like, the rivalry between them. 
And uh, I also like the part about MIT, the 1962 Space Wars. I, I never knew that, and that was, like I think, a good piece of um, information that he uh, looked up. Also, the Game Console Odyssey, that was a new one that I never heard of, but found quite interesting. Also, the how the history of Nintendo he had up there from like 1991 all the way to like what it is now, like showing the first one, the GameCube, the Wii, and the new Wii, showed like how each game system evolves from like old technology to new technology, but keeps the same top uh, like game ideas, like Mario, Zelda, and all those other ones. Yeah, I thought he uh, researched it pretty good. Okay. All right. Well, there are several things in it that I think are interesting. First of all, it's a topic that I think the audience can probably relate to. I'll bet you've got a lot of people out here who are gamers, and so it should be something that they would be uh, drawn to. You've got kind of a historical perspective on it. It makes it sound like it's going to be a chronological presentation. So I'm having to kind of figure that out, though, as I go along, because there are some issues at the beginning of the speech that I think contribute to that problem. The slides do the most to help organize your material and I think that that's a little problematic relying on the slides to do that. Um, however, they do help quite a bit and uh, the visuals that you had, the images are nice and crisp and clear. I don't think that they always explain uh, what you're talking about. The evolution of Nintendo that you had up there, I thought that was its own nice little sequence there. Uh, but they're talking primarily about the game console there. Uh, console there. In other words, what we're seeing is the thing that the players interact with. What we're not seeing is the tech stuff that you are talking about on each of those points. So you you say at one point, oh, well, we've got some pixelated images, and then you know they move into a 3D image, and then it's a an immersive kind of thing, and then there's something. Else, and I'm going, well, what are you talking about? Because I'll be perfectly honest. You know, the last video game that I played was. You know, asteroids, you know, and that was yes. in 1978 or 79, something like that. You know, it was like, because it's just not and something that I know. I mean, I've seen them and I know people play them and, I, and I've seen people doing kinds of stuff on that. So, but I, I have no familiarity with it and I, and, I, and I need to know what's going on here in those sorts of things. And it seems to me like that would be a rich, a ripe place to find some visuals that illustrate the difference in and advancement in technology. I think you need to structure the speech more clearly uh, from the beginning. And that's one of the problems with the presentation. There's not really a preview of what's going on and how we're going to trace this. I thought mostly you were going to stick about the original evolution of the game. So we're going to be hearing about what happened between MIT's development of their game and, uh, you know, and Pong. But that turns out to be only a section of the speech at the beginning. Couple of little tech things on this. I could be mistaken, but I really don't think I am. MIT is not a company. All right, MIT. It's the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. It's the most. Uh, it's the equivalent of Caltech out here. It's like Caltech and MIT are the two best tech schools in the world. So you know, that, I think that that's where all that technology developed. And you know, referring to it as a company kind of undermines your credibility a little bit. That might also explain why the other folks could steal so freely from it because it wasn't a commercial enterprise that they were fighting against. They said, hey, look at what these geeks at MIT came up with. Let's take that and turn it into a product kind of thing. Uh, so I, it feels to me like there's a lack of depth in the research there. Even though you've got a good story that you're talking about, it's, it's like... It's a story that you've heard and you're passing on instead of one that you understand and are explaining to us. And I think that that's, that's a little bit of a problem. Like I said, there are structural issues with the speech too, and I think that, that there are lots of places where you can fix that. One of the things that I did like about the presentation is that you talk to us. Uh, you're, you're not looking at notes. You feel like, I know the subject. I'm going to talk to people. And... I appreciate that uh, so much when people make an effort to try and speak to the audience. It, it really makes it different than if you're just, I'm reading an essay or I'm just going through the motions. You have something that you want to say and you want to share with us and, and I think you're doing a good job at that. I just need to think, I need what you've got to share with us has to be a little bit better put together. All right, thank you, Alex.